I don't want to give away, obviously, what happens in the after credits scene, but can yeah. you tell me, did you direct that or was it, did someone else direct that? Yeah, yeah I directed it? everything in the movie. Does that you know, bode well for the, doing different things as you go on in the Marvel Universe? Are there other things you, you have besides it, Spider-Man? What's exciting about the Marvel Universe is that it just keeps getting bigger and more interesting. So, you know, for me, it's, it's, it, it's a really fun playground. <laughs> So I want to talk about Peter's relationship with his father figures. You know, that's something that we've seen yeah. over the years um, in, in all the different incarnations. And yeah. here we had this, you know, this looming specter of Tony Stark, who he's lost a big father figure and then is able to connect with, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio in a very quick way. I mean, did yeah. you, would you think about in that sort of relationship or are you trying to steer away from that father figure? Oh, no, definitely. I mean, loss is such a big part of what makes Peter Parker who he is mm -hmm. um, and is explored in, in very fascinating ways in the comics. So the fact that we were dealing with this loss of his mentor, Tony Stark, uh, in this film allowed us to really sort of delve into those classic themes um, from the comics. Absolutely. And for, for Zendaya, um, you know, in I've spoken to her a number of times. You know, for the first film, yeah. for this, and it's always been really about steering away from the, you know, the classic cliches of you know what an MJ character might be. You know, right. damsel in distress, and here she's a love interest. All of a sudden, she wasn't in the first one, but we yeah. established that right away here. So, how are you consciously trying to steer her away from the the cliches and you know the the sexism that usually comes with that sort of <laughs> role? <laughs> well, I mean. So many of the female characters in those older comics are just purely defined by the color of their hair. So mm -hmm. I saw it as an opportunity to, you know, really sort of build uh, this character back from scratch and to um, have her fit into this this larger story that we're telling about, you know, lies and deception and, and hiding your feelings and, you know, Peter's running away from how he feels and she might be being upfront uh, about how she feels and take all of that and turn it into this, you know, sort of fun teenage romance. Mm. What do you thought, what, or what did you think that Jake Gyllenhaal brought to Mysterio in particular that really nobody else could have? I mean, Jake is such an incredible and versatile actor, like he can do anything. Mm. But, you know, introducing Mysterio, um, as a hero uh, into the Marvel Universe was, was such a radical shift from the comics. You, you know, we needed someone who could embody that sort of um, heroic spirit and, and also work as um, like a friend for Peter. So, you know, as they team up to take down these elementals, to be able to have that chemistry and, and, and act as someone that Peter can finally sort of open up to and mm. talk about, you know, superhero stuff. Mm. So, I mean, how do you feel that you've grown as a director over these two films because I mean you've done you did two films before this that were you know very different and you're ob <laughs> obviously able to do you know more and more with this series as it goes on especially here there's some amazing stuff visually that we get yeah um, especially in the second Thanks. half of the film um, which is you know gorgeous so how, how did you go about achieving that is that something that you really felt was always in your bag or something you had to learn along the way um, well you just try to take experiences from your life and use them and find ways to incorporate them into your work but you know, it, it was a really eye-opening experience um, doing the effects on the last film and just really seeing the potential um, of what you can do and, you know, the tools that are available to you and then taking all of that and really putting it to use in this film. Mm. Yeah, I want to talk just about how it is to be a filmmaker to fit into this, you know, gigantic landscape. So <laughs> how are your conversations with, you know, with Kevin and the people from, from Disney and from Marvel yeah. and even, you know, the Russos? Obviously, you're, you're the first thing coming off of this gigantic yeah. you know, paradigm-shifting <laughs> endgame. <laughs> Um, how much were you, that were you privy to? You know, how, how much? I were mean, you all of it. Like, oh, I was yeah. one of the one of the few people that knew everything that was going to happen in Infinity War and Endgame. So um, I was having to keep that secret for forever. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I, I knew that this film would be the first film that comes out after Endgame, and it would essentially play like almost like as a sequel, just starting moments after Endgame finishes. So you know, for me, that really helped uh, focus the story because once you know that. Um, you know, Tony's going to um, be gone. Like, that really gives you a juicy emotional story to tell. Was that the case for Homecoming as well? Were you privy to everything that was going on, or is that something that really came with, you know, coming after Endgame? I didn't know as much um, about the other films when I was making Homecoming as I did on this one. 
Um, but I think that actually served the film well because it's <laughs> Homecoming is about a kid who really wants to know, you know, what the Avengers are doing and they mm -hmm. won't let him. <laughs> so, you know, I use that as sort of, uh, you know, the lens to, to explore the world. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I was on the set last summer, but you were obviously a bit busy that day. It was like the what? first day you were shooting the action in, in Venice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did I even get to talk to anyone, or was I? No, you didn't. Too, I did. No, you did not. I didn't. Yeah, that was yeah. like um, that was crazy. So I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's good. It's good. Did to it, like Eric gave you a tour or, or someone? Yeah, yeah. We had okay, a good time. Great.